Uh, dear friends, today is a special day for us. Uh, uh, you are all here for a very special event on innovation. Uh, we will have two parts in this event. Uh, the first part will be on uh, innovations that uh, you can see in uh, some of them in here and in the back. Uh, that's the innovations that were made by Ukraine. Uh, okay, let me uh, say a couple of words about this so that you can see, all, all of you can see me well. Uh, the innovations that uh, were made by uh, people of Ukrainian origin, by uh, people who work in Ukraine, in uh, the US, in Canada, in other places. The second part, and uh, you have uh, some of them present here, and uh, the second part uh, will be the new program of uh, Rutgers University University joined with Concordia. Uh, so uh, these two parts logically link to each other because uh, uh, you know from what we have already done to what can be done and each of you can participate in this. Uh, the great project that we uh, did uh, was uh, a book which is uh, published uh, also thanks to the uh, Ministry of Information Policy of Ukraine now, which is the uh, Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports. And uh, this book is actually the second in the series. The first book was called uh, just Legacy Ukraine, and this is the second book, Legacy Ukraine, IT and Innovation. Uh, I'm really pleased to present uh, the people who uh, um, did great work on this book. The author, Sasha Eston, I'm really, uh, uh, really thankful for her work on this book. And uh, I'm really thankful to Ivan Stipurin. Uh, Ivan Stipurin is the editor, is uh, actually head of the publishing uh, house uh, Summit Book. And uh, this is uh, the product you can see. You will see the design and everything. Uh, this is uh, how Summit Book does the books. And that's perfect. Uh, as we have an innovation event today, uh, it's natural that we have, uh, well, our great innovator, Paul Thomas, who invented this uh, cooperation with Rutgers and with the program that we will present. Uh, so, Paul, well, yeah, I don't need to introduce him. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Volodymyr Stavnyuk. Uh, and Volodymyr uh, Stavnyuk is uh, head of the state uh, finance uh, innovation institution uh, for innovations, uh, SFII, uh, so the state finance institution for innovation. What does it mean? I think uh, Vladimir will uh, tell a couple of words about this. So, uh, uh, Vladimir, uh, your floor, uh, yeah, I'll just say that we have uh, Mr. Uh, Oleg Nominko, and uh, I am really glad. He could make it because uh, he is uh, one of the inventors, one of the people present in this book. And you know, Matrix knows something about us because when this book was printed, uh, you know, somehow it happened that, you know, here you have Oleg, and this is the text about me, and here you have me and the text about Oleg. So I didn't know that uh, it will be two of us here today. No one knew, but somehow the Matrix knew and they printed the text of us in uh, one uh, sheet that was then cut into this book. Oh Matrix knows everything. Uh, so, and uh, I would like uh, to present uh, Mr. Gennady uh, Semenchenko uh, from the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sports. Uh, previously it was the Ministry of uh, Information Policy, that's why you have here MIP. Uh, so this is uh, the person who uh, was the supervisor, or who is the supervisor of this project. Uh, the ministry is renamed, but he is the supervisor of the project, and very grateful to him for his role in uh, having this book done. Uh, so I think uh, the country is doing a lot of work on innovations. So it would be good to give the floor to Mr. Vladimir Stavnyuk, uh, who will. Uh, do, do some introduction about the innovations in Ukraine and how the government uh, su uh, supports them. Uh, 
подякуватися Сергію Вакаліну за ту можливість виступити і презентувати програми, які зараз діють в Україні для підтримки українських монахів. So, Ministry of Economy, Trade and Agriculture. Я голова управління державної національної фінансової відмислової стейт фінансової інституції по інновацій. And so, Mr. Sanyuk is head of the state finance institution for innovations, which is under the auspices of this ministry. Створення нашого установу прямо передбачено законом України про інноваційну діяльність. The institution was created according to the law of Ukraine on innovation activity. Так, як наші права і обов'язки прямо передбачені законом України, це дає нам унікальний статус на фінансовому ринку України. So our rights and obligations are in the law, so this gives us our status in the innovation market of Ukraine. Провокаючи він виводить нас під полі контролю Національного банку України і де можливість фінансувати ті проекти, які не можуть фінансувати комерційні державні банки України. Ми не є частиною супервізії Національного банку України, тому що ми можемо фінансувати проєкти, які не можуть бути фінансувати, наприклад, комерційні банки в Україні. Ці можливості Кабінет Міністрів використовує в декількох напрямках, я остановлюсь тільки на одному з них. І Кабінет Міністрів фінансує це в декількох ways, мы уже добрый до долго учали поддержку инноваций, поддержку стартапов во всем мире. We did a lot of studies about innovations and support of startups in the world. Перед усім взяли за основу два досвіду. Це досвід наших західних сусідів поляків і досвід Ізраїлю. Крім того, так як ми відповідаємо за інновації в країні навіть з самого початку створення української незалежності, це майже 20 років, я очолю структуру тільки 3 роки. Ця інституція була створена майже дуже скоро після індепенденції, за близько 20 років, це існує, але я керівник цього сервісу за 3 роки. Але так як маємо можливість займатися реструкторизацією всіх кредитів, які наша держава надавала на розвиток інновацій, ми побачили декілька етапів розвитку підтримки інновацій в Україні. And we were working on restructuring of the loans that were provided in the previous years, and we saw the potential for support of innovations in Ukraine. Це були різні періоди. Спочатку були гранти, потім були кредити, потім держава почала створювати державні підприємства, так називаємо національні проекти. Everything started in our activity from grants, then there were loans, and then we started the national innovation projects. Ми побачили цю безперспективність цього напрямку і особливо останні фінансування національних проєктів в Україні, хоча їх було більше часті. Ми бачили, які перспективи є в цій сфері, і було більше 20 проєктів. І нам вдалося на Кабінеті Міністрів доказати, що найкраща модель, яка підходить зараз для України, це ізраїльська модель. And we proved it as a vision of the cabinet ministers that the model that is used in Israel actually can be very well implemented in Ukraine. Финансовать не национальные проекты, финансовать даже не проекты. This is funding not of the national projects, even not of projects at all. А держава має финансовать активную часть населения населения. But the funding should be provided to the active population of the country. Мені дуже сподобалось, коли у нас була дискусія в Телевійському університеті, коли ми спілкувалися так само такі аудиторії з вашими ізраїльськими однолітками. Ми мали дискусію в Телевійському університеті, і ми мали конвенцію з людьми, які мають як ви. На запитання, яким хочуть стати студенти, ніхто з них не відповів, що хоче працювати в якійсь великій корпорації або піти на державну роботу. And I asked, what work students would like to do? No one said that they want to want to work for corporations or for the government. Більшість сказала, що ми хочемо придумати свій стартап. Most people said we want to do our startups. І хочемо жити народ. 
So that we live on that during the rest of our life. And this is a correct approach. That's why Israel decided to support these people, these young people. Величезний об'єм фінансування, який держава надає грантово на підтримку цих цих амбіцій своїх своїх молодих молодих. It's a huge number of grants that Israel provides to young people to support their ambitions. Саме тому ми взяли за основу цю цю ідею і запустили з першого січня експериментальний проект згідно постанови номер номер п'ятсот кабінету. That's why from first of January we started this project in the same way. Ця ідея передбачає підтримку винахідникам на самому ранньому етапі, на етапі народження ідеї. Which the idea is to support innovators, inventors from the very early stage of the idea. Яка проблема винахідника, напевно, більше з вас так само це знає? Probably most of you know what the problem that the inventors have. Ніхто не знає з винахідників, куди треба йти за своєю ідеєю. They don't know where to go with this idea. Існує величезна недовіра як до власного університету, так і до бізнесу українців. They don't have much trust sometimes to their universities, to the Ukrainian business. Величезна проблема в Україні – це довіра до власної держави. Actually, there is a problem with trust in Ukraine, including the trust of the government. Окрема довіра до державних механізмів підтримки. And in particular to the state support. Саме тому ми створили таку модель, щоб зробити таку першу двері, куди може постукати винахідник за допомогою з розвитком його ідеї. So we try to do sort of a first door where the innovators can knock when they want to have support for their ideas. Я не буду затримувати багато часу, але двох слова скажу. In two words, it works like this. Якщо є ідея, то цю ідею можна просто зареєструвати у нас на сайті. If you have an idea, go to our site and register your idea. Заповнити невеличку анкету. You complete a form, it's small. Записати відеозвернення, щоб ви побачили, що є жива людина і вона вміє говорити. Make some small film about you, where you can show that you are not a boss, you are a living person. Далі ідея попадає в експертне середовище, експертно виступає професура провідних університетів в Україні. Then experts from leading universities in Ukraine will look at your idea and provide expertise. Якщо конкурсна комісія рекомендує до підтримки, то ми... They will examine it if the commission recommends it to support this idea. То ми далі шукаємо, не даємо кошти. Then we will provide funding. Ми шукаємо команду яка допоможе цьому винахідничу з подальшим розвитком його ідеї. We will look for a team that will help these inventors. За наші кошти ця команда зробить лабораторне тестування, тобі ж підтвердить, що дійсно ваш винахід має ті параметри, які заявляються. It will be tested so that we can see that what you say your idea is about is really what it is. Проведе аналіз патентної чистоти. Then we will look if there are any patents in this area. Підготовити рекламні промоушені матеріали, що дуже важливо. Prepare various materials to promote it because it's very important for the inventors to have the support. Ну і взагалі навчимо, навчимо, як шукати гроші в сучасному світі. And we will train you how to find money in this world. Тому всіх запрошую до цього фонду. So everyone is welcome to our foundation. І далі, і далі. Якщо підтвердиться от те, що я сказав, лабораторне тестування, знайдеться глобальні ринки, куди можна продавати ваш продукт. So, if you can see any global markets, if we see the markets for you. По великому рахунку, у нас є два критерії оцінки цього стартапу. Це можна зробити, і це можна продати. There are two criteria. What you can do and what you can sell. Якщо підтвердиться, що можна зробити, можна продати, то далі ми готові розглядати навіть створення спільного підприємства за участю винахідника. If you can do it, if you can sell it, then we can even have a joint venture with the inventor. Де ми залишаємо до собою невеличку частку цих корпоративів. And we will have a small share of the corporate rights. Наш фонд не єдиний, який зараз буде діяти в Україні. Ми запустилися з 1 січня, з 1 січня запускається інший фонд, фонд підтримки інновацій. This is not the only foundation for supportive innovations. We have our foundation from 1 January this year. Next year there will be also another foundation for supportive innovations. Який буде підтримувати стартап вже на наступних етапах? And this will be the support of startups at later stages.
Це показує, що держава повертається обличчям до винахідників. So the state tries to help the innovators. Ми бачимо величезні можливості для економіки України. And it's a lot of support for Ukrainian economy. Україна готова генерувати ідеї, на які готові продавати на глобальних ринках. That's the ideas that Ukraine can generate and sell in the global market. Ну і наприкінці от закінчую свій невеличкий спіч. So in the end I would like як я розказав, ми працювали з багатьма консультантами при запитку цього процесу програм. Один консультант у нас був Сополучений Штатів Америки, він жінний інвестор. Ми коли працювали, казали критерії оцінки, те, що розказав, це можна зробити, можна продати. So in terms of evaluation criteria, like you can do it, you can sell it. Він сказав, давайте дамо ще. Має бути ще команда, наявність команди. He added that there should be a team. І у цій команди має бути досвід. With experience. Причому, що важливо, він сказав, що якщо досвід негативний, If it's negative experience, то це плюс. It's actually good. І це мені показало величезну різницю між нашою ментальністю, українською, скажімо так, пострадянською ментальністю. And actually that's the difference between the mentality in this part of the world and the former Soviet part of the world. Ви більш молоді, сподіваюся, ваш не сосується, але в нас ще... And the rest of the world. Surely you are quite young, so you are not about the former Soviet mentality. Нас учили так боятися бути неудачником, лузером. But this is, you know, the Soviet mentality was that you should never be a loser, you should be trying to avoid it at any cost. А західна світ по-іншому. But in the West it works different way. Будьте активними. You should be active. Не бійте згенерувати ідеї. And you should generate ideas. Навіть якщо ваша ідея не злетить на початку. If the first idea does not work in the beginning, ви отримаєте досвід, який може капіталізувати вашу власну ідею. You still get experience that you can capitalize on. І це, насправді, буде те, що підніме вашу вартість при прийомі на роботі. And your value will be higher. Тому я вам бажаю всіх успіху. Успіху. Wishing you all success. Develop your ideas. Дякуючи організаторам. І вважаю подяка за ту книгу, яку вони зробили. And for the book that they have done. Це має бути історія успіху України, а то і такі історії, таких історій України дуже мало. And we should have this more of the stories. Дякую. I give the floor to the author of the book, Sasha Eston. Welcome. Добрий вечір, доброго дня. Я зовут Саша Естен, и я работала над проектом Legacy Ukraine и работаю сейчас, продолжаю, и у меня большая команда. Да-да-да, сейчас мы... Uh, can you see what is in the screen, or should I read it out? I should read it out, I believe, yeah? Okay. Uh, so... Um, uh, where, where should I stand? Uh, see, it's on the screen. Okay. Oh, okay, excellent. <coughs> So, uh, we have a big team uh, when we are doing this project, uh, a big team works on it. Uh, we dedicate this uh, collector's art book to heroes of Ukrainian descent and relay their stories in a new, intriguing way. Uh, it's illustrations rendered in magazine cover format. Адже досягнення і внесок цих особистостей гідно того, щоб бути розміщеними на обкладинках журналів. So this is done intentionally because uh, these are the contributions of fellow Ukrainians that deserve a place uh, in the spotlight of a cover. Що ж до інформації, то ми лаконічно розповідаємо про становлення конкретних людей і коротко подаємо їхні біографії. In the content we tell about the essence of each and every person, provide also more detailed biographies. А головний акцент робимо на іншому – позитивних наслідках їхньої діяльності. But the real emphasis in, uh, is in the positive effects of their activities. Розуміння цих здобутків, що досягнути завдяки видатним українцям, допоможе усвідомити, наскільки важлива їхня діяльність і внесок. And indeed, the contributions of Ukraine's eminent sons and daughters shows the significance of their work and impact in the world. 
Багато хто знає, де народився і жив той чи інший талановий, де ви знаходитесь в Україні, але мало кому відомі вагомі наслідки його успішної діяльності. Uh, many people know where talented Ukrainians lived, where they were born, but uh, few people know about the global effects of this uh, people's work. Так. Ми відкриваємо вражаючі цифри і розповідаємо про колосальний вплив цих людей не тільки на їхню епоху, але й на майбутнє. So, we show in the book the staggering numbers which show the huge effects that these people uh, created and also their influence uh, that is in the past, in present and the future. З нашої книги ви дізнаєтесь, як корпорація Apple досягла багатомільярдних обігів завдяки нащадку американських іммігрантів з українськими корінням. So, what you can find out from our book, uh, you will see uh, how one of uh, people of uh, Ukrainian descent uh, made uh, Apple uh, company uh, climb to the multi-billion revenues. Ви дізнаєтесь про народження і утвердження світових модних брендів і створення нових напрямків у мистецтві. Uh, you will find out, uh, that's also when we are talking about other books in the series, uh, how Ukrainians contributed to uh, art, to new um, areas in culture. Вам стане відомо, чому 3,8 мільярда людей у мережі інтернет не змогли б користуватися нею, якби не винаходив українського вченого, і як існування сучасного Wi-Fi було б неможливим, коли б не ідеї однієї актриси з українським корінням. Uh, you will find out uh, how um, about 4 billion internet users uh, would not be able to use it today uh, unless there was a Ukrainian inventor, uh, one of the, uh, those in the book, and also um, how Wi-Fi was uh, created on the basis of uh, another uh, invention of an eminent actress, actually, with Ukrainian roots. Наша книга сповнена дивовижними історіями та яскравими образами, що проведуть вас найзнакомішими етапами діяльності людей, чи коріння нерозривно пов'язано з Україною. So uh, there is a lot of colorful images in the book and incredible stories that will show how uh, the protagonists of the book um, whose roots are tied to Ukraine made an impact on this world. Так, і е, я е, прошу вас уривок з книжки про Мартіна Купера. Тобто просто про його досягнення цих, як ви можете почитати. Uh, one small uh, part of the book is showing uh, the experience about Martin Cooper. Uh, Martin Cooper uh, is the person, uh, he is in the back, one of the, uh, he is there in which color? I believe he is in the orange color, yes. Uh, so this uh, is the uh, inventor of Ukrainian origin who invented the cell phone. Is there anyone here without a cell phone? Probably not. Uh, so all of you have the device that was invented originally by Martin Cooper. And uh, now uh, how we uh, can show how the book describes this. Many attempted to implement this idea, but only Martin succeeded. And in 1973, uh, he made the first ever historic call from a cellular phone. And uh, this was uh, a breakthrough because uh, from the 14 kilogram device, uh, he uh, managed to make a device which was uh, less than uh, two kilos. Uh, so can you imagine if the mobile phone was 14 kilograms? Okay, uh, so that's what he invented. So this was the turning point when the telephone became really mobile. И я хотела ещё также сказать, что среди нас тоже присутствуют люди, которые уже легенды, и они очень много делают, и это Сергей, который есть в этом издании. So uh, we have uh, people who do a lot and uh, some of them present here and uh, давайте сразу скажем про Олега, чтобы не So there are two people present in uh, the audience from the book and this is Oleg and myself. <laughs> Это правда.
Добрий вечір. Я бачу в цій залі дуже багато молодих людей. So, good evening. There is a lot of young people in this audience. При підтримці нашого міністерства була випущена ця чудова книга. So, uh, our ministry supported the, uh, this excellent edition. Uh, we provided support to its publishing. І мета була, щоб ви, молоді люди, більше знали про тих людей, які творили історію України. So the real purpose was that uh, young people like you have more knowledge about people who uh, contributed uh, to Ukrainian history. В тому числі сучасних творців. And uh, both the historical figures and the current ones. Да, і я бажаю вам всім у цій залі і багатьом іншим молодим людям, щоб ви створили свої стартапи і успішно втілювали життя, в тому числі завдяки тому, що говорив раніше спікер. So, uh, really, I would wish you uh, to do work, uh, do work on your ideas, uh, create startups, and including uh, the ideas that could be generated on the basis of this book, if you read it and have some ideas, so you can... Uh, by the way, I should show here. Uh, uh, so these are some people in this book that I will later on show uh, how they contributed. Uh, and in the back, you can also see uh, some of them. Uh, I will tell you later the principle of this. So, I wish you a lot of success. Uh, in in uh, um, this moment, let me just briefly explain. In the back, we have some people who uh, are present in uh, the first Legacy Ukraine book. And the first book was really about uh, many areas, from Bailey and art to IT and uh, um, other areas. And uh, so, in... Uh, uh, really different colors. The first three people, Martin Cooper, uh, Steve Wozniak, and uh, Hedy Lamar. Uh, she is there in the first book. And now we also have a number of people in the second book, which is about IT and innovations. And also there is uh, some people, uh, a group of people, which I showed sort of in uh, black. And uh, this is sort of uh, about the second part of our presentation. Uh, I will uh, tell about them later. Um, so uh, now, uh, would you? Uh, um, I, I, I have great pleasure to introduce um, Oleg Neuminka, one of the protagonists of this book. And uh, Oleg, uh, would like to tell about your inventions. Thanks a lot. Uh, so I was uh, started a company which called Pocket Book in 2007. Uh, I have 27 years old and I have a big dream to change the world. Uh, I also recommend you to try to make your idea uh, and you need to have your idea, you need to have motivation and also you need to have a team. Team is most important part of the first stage and you need to believe in one idea together and you need to move forward together for realize this idea. Uh, right now I started a new company which is called Hylis. Uh, we developed uh, authentication solution with change uh, 
way for open the door for recognize people in digital environment so you can generate runtime password, uh, digital signature and so on. Yeah. So uh, at this uh, market it's not so huge in Ukraine and I made this company in the United States and I also recommend you to think globally and you can start your idea to build in Ukraine and then you can move forward and bring this idea to other market and markets it's too big and all idea can find uh, customer and partners in the world so I can recommend you to start doing something thanks thank you so much for Okay, probably I should uh, tell a couple of words about myself and uh, how I managed to get into this book. Uh, so, just briefly. Um, uh, so, uh, my name is uh, Sergei Vakarin and uh, <laughs> I wanted to say, I am an addict, I am addicted to innovations. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> this is uh, my photo in the book. Okay, I'm one of these men in black, I guess. Uh, so, uh, this is uh, the picture uh, in SWOT, uh, Silicon Valley Open Doors. Uh, do you know, um, well, everyone knows what Silicon Valley is. But uh, Silicon Valley Open Doors is a conference which was organized by another of us. Uh, and in the back you have the picture of Stas Hirman. And this is a person who organized this conference for people mainly from the former Soviet Union. But now actually everyone can come from any part of the world. And so this is a way for people who don't know, don't have much connections in the Silicon Valley, how they can come to the Valley with their inventions. Stas helped me a lot with uh, doing the first presentation, and I'm very grateful to him. He is also in the book. Um, so, uh, okay, how does it work? Well, uh, let me do it like this then. So, uh, I'm head of uh, Ukraine East. Uh, it's an NGO which uh, promotes uh, high technologies in Ukraine and also promotes uh, Ukrainian high tech in the world. Um, I'm graduate of uh, Chiumnin. Uh, this is a British scholarship program. So, I um, graduated from Manchester University, also quite an innovative one. Uh, the one where Alan Turing walked, one of the fathers of the computing. Um, uh, so, I'm interested in various areas like uh, space. Uh, so, this is my meeting with uh, Randy Blesnik, uh, the commander of the International Space Station. Um, and uh, from aerospace, uh, yeah, this is the device, uh, you know, for example, maybe it's Guild Your Ideas, uh, which can be for startups. Uh, for example, Vodafone decide, decided to send this thing to the moon so that there is mobile communications on the moon. And, uh, uh, well, another area of interest is quantum computers. I think everyone should think about how they can be used. Uh, this is uh, CERN, the, um, you know, CERN, the nuclear research facility in Switzerland. Um, this is also linked to quantum computers, by the way. Uh, so, the, another area is uh, cyber security. Uh, so, well, I visit various conferences and hackathons in Switzerland, for example. Uh, well, the blockchain and uh, uh, fintech is also an interesting area. Uh, so, now, how uh, in the world did I get to this project? Uh, so, um, uh, I should say, by the way, that there are some people who we didn't manage to show in the first lot, because we should tell about at least some of them. Uh, for example, uh, Kokosh, uh, this is uh, the man who invented the robotic arm, and, for example, when we've been talking about the Rangers program, there are ways to create such robotic arms. But what did he do with the robotic arm? Okay, he used it to uh, do very uh, intriguing ways of uh, shooting the films. And he is used in Hollywood. Uh, his equipment is used in Hollywood for shooting films. Uh, uh, so, for example, the 11 Friends of Ocean and, ah, yes, and Titanic, yeah, his equipment was used in shooting the Titanic. 
So that's the people in our, our book. Okay, but coming back. Uh, when we started to work on Legacy Ukraine, uh, I provided information about some of the people I know in the IT and innovation area, and then uh, the colleagues, uh, Ivan and uh, Alexandra, looked at what I was doing, and okay, uh, before I went to England, I wrote uh, some books about investment in Ukraine, and uh, now we, they discovered that, okay, there are thousands of references to this book, to my work on law and uh, other areas, and uh, indeed, in that time, I tried to meet people in the government and tell them, okay, if Ukraine wants to be rich, you need to protect innovations. It was the same year when the uh, uh, State Financial Institution for Innovation was created. I wrote this book on investment in Ukraine. And I met with uh, people uh, like administration of the president, the prime minister, that uh, prime minister Pustavoytenko at that time, and to convince them that, okay, make the laws that protect investment in Ukraine. Well, I achieved some success, and uh, now my works were used in various strategies uh, in Ukraine and even in Belarus. So uh, some of this succeeded, some not, but. Uh, I tried to meet with various people like this is the Under Secretary General of the UN, uh, Jeffrey Feldman, uh, and uh, one achievement that I made, uh, we don't have now the uh, um, representative of National Aviation University, but when uh, just Justin Trudeau came to Ukraine, uh, I was one of the people who signed one of the first three agreements uh, in the framework of KUFTA, the uh, Canadian Ukrainian Free Trade Agreement. So it was actually an agreement on education, so that Ukraine has cooperation in uh, education in such areas as um, aviation, preparation of pilots, and so on. Um, so uh, this is uh, uh, in Davos, there is the Ukrainian house, so uh, th this is, uh, I was sort of summarizing the outcomes of uh, the last Davos. You, you know the Davos Economic Forum, probably you all are in economics, so you all know about this. But what was interesting about this last Davos, that it was about the fourth industrial revolution, that the Internet of Things is coming to the industry, and for the economy to move ahead, uh, the industry should transform and uh, use all these new smart devices, not only smart phones or smart watches or whatever, but now it should be smart enterprises, really. Uh, so, this is uh, how I came here. Paul told me about this excellent idea about um, Rutgers University and the brilliant facilities that they have. So, um, I thought about how to combine this program with uh, the programs in other universities, like in Ukraine, like the Polytechnical University and the uh, Aviation University. Uh, so, this is a, a conference in Barcelona on Mobile uh, uh, World um, Congress. Um, I was uh, evaluating startups, so if you have ideas how to uh, do something about startups, uh, welcome, we have a business incubator in Ukraine, and welcome, uh, if you invented during the uh, Rangers program, we will try to help you and also find investors, and then uh, the state uh, financial service, will, uh, innovation service will surely make sure that it succeeds in Ukraine. Uh, so that's about me, and uh, let me now, uh, I believe uh, this was um, what we needed to tell you about the book. Now uh, we can, oh, it's brilliant, actually 5 o'clock and we can move <coughs> to the second part, which is the uh, program with Rangers. Actually, uh, I think the time is, was perfect. Thank you for all the speakers for being so perfect in time. All right, hello everybody. My name is Paul Thomas. <laughs> passing grade this year. So um, I'm speaking today in my capacity as the special advisor to the, our rector, uh, Dr. Alexander Romanovsky. Um, we have a very special program and I'm really excited to tell you about it. Uh, this is a program that is open not just to our uh, undergraduate business students, 
but it's also open to, uh, in fact, we have very warmly invited students from uh, other of Ukraine's leading universities in IT, engineering, aeronautics, uh, those studying in departments such as at uh, Shevchenko University in cybersecurity and other areas, uh, to join this program. Because the philosophy, now I'm going <laughs> to, if you guys remember, every time I use this, I seem to have a problem. Oh, Okay, as our students know, and for those of you who are visitors, we, we have a philosophy, and you, you see this philosophy here. We have spoken about Ukraine's legacy in, in, in innovation and in science. This is, this is a contribution to the world by Ukrainian people. We are now an independent country Ukraine is recognized as one of the leading countries in the world for IT, and we are developing innovation in this country that you cannot believe. We have the private sector law. We have support from the government. We have incubator programs. We have uh, angel investors and venture capitalists, and we have a lot of brilliant people, not just Ukrainians, but all of those who are coming to live and work here as well. We're determined at this university to make our contribution to having Ukraine be one of the world's leading nations for innovation. And I believe that that will happen and it's going to happen right now. Um, our philosophy is like this. Uh, some of our students may have seen, I, I like this kind of a diagram. Look in the middle. There's a positive outcome. Right? In our world today, Innovation, startup companies, or creating a project for a company for whom you already work. It's all about creating a positive outcome. Doing something that is socially responsible, that solves the needs of people, and in the process makes you money. Okay? And there's no contradiction between having a business that's socially responsible, solves problems, meets a real need, and at the same time, you succeed and the market rewards you by having you earn money. There's nothing, no, no incompatibility there, okay? So our, our philosophy is that to get this positive outcome, you cannot study uh, uh, science or innovation or economics or business in isolation of each other, okay? We, we've kind of inherited uh, a university system in the world where we have an engineering college and, and over here we have a business college. And the faculty and the students don't really communicate. But when you go into business, when you create a company, if, if all you know is business, you will fail. If all you know is engineering, you will fail. You have to know all of them together. That's where the concept of a team comes from. That's why you need a team. And we're developing academic programs here uh, the one I'm going to talk about today is with Rutgers University, and it's based on building a team around science, innovation, business, economics, working together to create whatever the positive outcome is that you want, whatever your innovation is, okay? Um, Rutgers University, we're very proud of this relationship. Um, because Concordia University is fully accredited in the United States, so all of our courses, all of our credits, all of our diplomas are fully transferable, fully accepted in the United States. We're very proud of that. That was a very, it's very, very difficult to maintain the academic and ethical standards to have that kind of accreditation. It's why we have joint degree programs with, for example, the University of Minnesota. So with Rutgers University, we have a new summer program that will start in the summer of 2020. Uh, Rutgers, as you can see, I put some information here on them. They're one of the top universities in America, they're one of the top universities in the world. They have, uh, they're an old university, they're very large, okay? They have, uh, you know, hundreds of research centers, institutes. But notice the, the, the one I like is this one. <coughs> this, is the, this is the statistic I like. Uh, Rutgers University is currently managing over $750 million of grants in, in science, in innovation. That's a lot of money. I mean, that's a lot of money. That's probably a thousand universities you've added all up. They don't have that kind of money. 
because they're a leader in science and innovation. This is why we partnered up with them. Okay? Um, we are going to be, the summer program is going to be working uh, with one of these institutes at Rutgers University called the Maker Space Institute. <coughs> and the, I'm going to tell you in a moment about the Maker Space Institute. But what we're going to do is we're going to combine this incredible uh, maker, maker space facility uh, with engineering and IT students, with business students, and an intercultural experience, because we're in, we hope some of our international students will join the program. And of course, we have some American cultural experiences that we're going to put on the weekends as well. So we're going to combine all of this together, business, engineering, IT, some fun, okay, and, and have a good program. What is the program? First, the Makerspace facility, the Makerspace facility, it is a 3,000 square meter, state-of-the-art, uh, automated rapid manufacturing facility, okay? State-of-the-art, automated rapid manufacturing. It is designed for people to, to utilize this facility to design, to produce as a prototype, products. Products that fit a very, very broad range of industries and applications. Um, the facility has uh, at least six or eight uh, of all of these things. It has 3D printers, 3D scanners, okay, absolute state of the art. It has laser cutters, advanced data analytic systems. Uh, they have an Arduino platform, which is an advanced analytic system that, that lets you design, uh, you know, and, and, and you know, 3D design and, and manage the um, production of, of products, games, services. Uh, they have you know, wood shops, metal shops, commercial kitchens. They have an auto bay because they're doing a lot of electric vehicle research. They have their own auto bay. Uh, graphics, automated textiles, you name it, they have it. Okay? All right? Um, it's a cool, it's a really cool facility. If you like hands-on, and that's the whole purpose here, hands-on, all right? You know, I studied economics, I studied finance, I studied accounting, and I've taught all those subjects. I've founded uh, businesses. Um, but, but, but I realized that during my life, I didn't have enough hands-on experience, okay? You know, if, if you say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to create some, some software that uh, uh, is going to analyze data real time, vast amounts of data real time coming in from sensors, Internet of Things. Well, it's a really good idea to know wh what those sensors are, right? I mean, produce one, hold it in your hand, understand how it works, what it does, okay? That's, that's that complete circle of knowledge, okay? Uh, uh, we, we concentrate a lot on the intangibles, but we kind of forget that everything we do is, is actually originating with a, with a tangible physical product. So this facility is really cool. It's great fun. Okay? Um, the program uh, is going to work like this. Uh, there's, by the way, there's a lot of detail on the Concordia University website. I'll give you that link here in a minute. Um, the way this is going to work, <coughs> this program, which we call Science, Innovation, and Entrepreneurship, uh, we have an experiential learning session. We'll have two days of a pre-departure course here in Ukraine, uh, conducted by uh, our dean, Dr. Kratzun, myself, Sir David Karen, who you've got to know, uh, other faculty. Um, and then we'll have 21 days program at Rutgers University at their campus in New Jersey. If you don't know where Rutgers is located, it's about a 25-minute train ride from New York City. Okay, it's just outside of New York City. Um, we will also have three weekends of uh, cultural activities. We'll visit New York, Philadelphia, and we'll visit one of the coolest places ever if you love science and innovation. We're going to visit the Thomas Edison National Historic Park, which has been perfectly preserved. It's where Edison, throughout his entire life, 
did all of his work, all of his inventions, the electric light bulb, the phonograph, hundreds and hundreds of patented inventions. It was all done in his laboratory, which has, after his death, has been perfectly preserved. And, and, and it's really cool. It's very inspirational. Um, okay, so the program has a uh, pre-departure course the first day. Uh, the only thing to pay attention to here is we're going to have uh, a, lot of, a lot of attention paid to working on startup skills, IT skills, design thinking, team building, right? The idea is that after these two days, when we get to America, we have our teams ready to go. We, the teams are formed, the ideas are there, and we, we hit the ground running, as the soldiers would say, right? Hit the ground running. So on the first day, we're going to talk about industries of the future, and we're going to talk about makerspace facilities. We're going to talk about these uh, startup skills, especially design thinking, design thinking. Um, you know, the reason that, one reason, that the Apple phone has dominated the world market over Samsung and others is because they have a beautiful design, right? You know, the Apple phone doesn't necessarily do anything more or better than Samsung, but it does and always does and always has had a beautiful design. So design thinking is just as important as what is my innovation going to do? You also have to think about what's it going to look like? What's going to be the emotional appeal? Okay? So, um, so we're, going to, we're going to talk about those things. Um, on the second day, we're going to devote that entire day to a, an exercise where we're going to get people to focus, choose uh, their innovation idea, especially following certain criteria because we have a philosophy of education here that is very socially responsible, it's very ethical, and so we want, we want innovation ideas to be uh, profitable, sustainable, to be socially responsible. We want innovations that focus on giving a benefit to people, solving a problem. Trust me, you go to the market with a solution to a person's problem, and you will leave a very wealthy person. The best example that I've ever heard is this. Think about this. You all know what a drill is, right? 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 Nobody in this world wants to buy a drill. They want to buy a hole. You don't want to buy a drill. You have a need. You need a hole in something. It needs to be in metal. It needs to be in wood. It needs to be a small hole. It needs to be a big hole. That's, that's your need. You want to buy a solution to your need, which is, I need a hole right here in this thing. And then you go out and look for what solution the market will offer to your problem. Might be a small drill, big drill, cheap drill, who knows, right? There's a lot of different drills. But if you start the process, the business process, the innovation process, by focusing on the product, you're going to fail. If you start by focusing on the solution that a customer is looking for, the need that a person has. So if you say, I'm going to produce the world's greatest drill, I believe you. You will produce the world's greatest drill. I believe in you, and you will fail. But if you say, I'm going to solve the problem of giving people the hole in some piece of wood <laughs> that they need, and I'm going to solve that problem better than my competitors, I guarantee you, you will succeed. That's the key. That's the key. Think of the need. Don't think of the problem. And that's the kind of thing we're going to be talking about. We're going to get people formed into teams of four. I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, we're going to get people formed into teams of four, everything all organized, so that when we get to Rutgers, no time wasted, very first day, we're in the makerspace and we're working on our innovations. Okay. Um, what can we do at the Rutgers Makerspace Laboratory? And the answer is anything. Anything you want to do. 
All right? Remember, this is one of the largest universities in the world. They have experts in everything. So we will be working with up to five. We want to have 20 students in the program. We want to have four students to a team, five teams. If I've done my math correctly, and I hope I have, all right? <laughs> five teams of four people, 20, 20 students, and we're, we're going to have one Rutgers faculty mentor, okay, who will work for three weeks with that group. And the expertise of that faculty member will depend on the area in which the team wants to innovate. We've put down some of these. Uh, you'll see these on our Concordia University website. Because these are areas that have been worked on in the past. I know some of the experts in these areas. So things like uh, biomedical sensors, you know, wearables, right? Um, uh, agribusiness, Internet of Things. Uh, there's no such thing as farming anymore. There's only smart farms. All right, you go, you go, go, go to go to a farm in Ukraine. You look at any piece of equipment. It is full of IoT. It is full of the Internet of Things that's managing the fuel consumption. You know, monitoring exactly how deep it's digging in the ground, etc., etc., etc. Those IoT is feeding that information back to big data analytic systems. Okay, notice the physical and the intangible, right? So, um, agribusiness and sustainability. This is one of the biggest areas in the world now. Energy, recycling, okay, the closed society. Um, urban development, are you interested in traffic management? Any kind of smart city application, from traffic to environmental, uh, infrastructure, retail. Let's, let's don't forget retail. We have the ability at the makerspace. Ah, okay. Right. This is the first time anybody's ever told me I'm not speaking loud enough. We, we, we have the ability at this facility to, to work on uh, retail. Design a product, design the package, do the focus group testing, work out all the price and cost parameters, you know, bench scale. It's really cool. Uh, we can do. We also have the ability to work on in areas of food, <coughs> commercial kitchen, food technology, food innovation is very big in the world. No, so we have uh, food and fashion, and not only fashion because they have automated weaving machines, you know, computer computerized machines that might virtually instantly produce the most sophisticated, say, t-shirt designs that you set at, 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 at the computer and, and organized 3D. And then you, you organize and design it on the computer, and it's printed, you know, it's produced automatically by their, by their weaving equipment. Um, but, also, but also producing fashion items that are now recyclable and biodegradable. So we have a, the ability to, to study that as well. And what's really cool, especially if you're an engineer, they're doing a lot of, uh, uh, everyone is, a lot of autonomous vehicle research. So one of the things we can do for anyone interested in, in electric vehicles, uh, we, we, we will take a, a, a two scale, right, exactly to scale, uh, a radio controlled car, and then we will, we will you can program into there, uh, sit down and do a program that will allow you to remotely control the car to, to navigate through obstacle courses in various uh, tasks like collision avoidance, recognizing a pedestrian, okay? Uh, the data can be collected, it can be analyzed. Again, it's hands-on. You're not going to walk out of this program and go compete uh, uh, against Waymo or Ford who are producing electric vehicles, but you're going to understand exactly how this works, okay? Um, and the most important one, let me draw your attention to this, student proposed innovation. <coughs> um, I'm thinking, or we have a visiting professor from one of my favorite Ukrainian schools, the Kiev Polytechnic Institute. And I'm hoping that the engineering students there will be a source of a lot of innovation. So, for, if four students come, 
hopefully business students engineering together, come with any idea. Okay, if there's four of you and you have an idea, you are going to be able to work directly with a Rutgers University faculty mentor in that facility on that idea for three weeks. And I mean, I can't, I mean, unless you want to innovate a better jewelry cigarette, in that case, we'll probably say no. But, but, but if it's anything, if it's anything other than that, uh, you can do it. So, so be creative. Um, this is really cool. Um, we, we have cultural activities. You, you'll have some free time. You're all adults. You have free time. Uh, nights and weekends. Um, we, will, we will organize some uh, uh, tours to New York City, Philadelphia on Saturdays. Sunday, it'll be free. You can do what you want. Um, if you want to go someplace else, let me know. I'm going to be there with Dr. Pratsoon running the program. Um, but. The very first thing we're going to do as a group is we're going to visit the uh, Thomas Edison National Historic Park, uh, which as I mentioned earlier, this is where indisputably America's greatest inventors, one of the greatest inventors of all time, uh, if you think that the phonograph and the electric light bulb are kind of cool, <laughs> I do, right? All of this work was done by him. And as he said a million times during his life, it's not just me, it's my team. So this is the world without Edison, by the way. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought that was Sergey's that was way nice. of saying, <laughs> it's time to stop, okay? Uh, all right, uh, that's, okay. I like, I like the world with Edison. Um, but he, seriously, listen to this. Thomas Edison, his probably his greatest invention, he almost doesn't get credit for it. He invented what we call the modern research laboratory. There was no such thing as a research laboratory where a bunch of people came together and all they did was research. Research and innovation, scientific research, technological innovation, that's all they did. There was no such a thing like that until he created that idea. And he created the idea of research teams, so we could have a team concentrating on this and that and this and that and this and that. That's why hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I think actually thousands of patents came flowing out of Edison's research laboratory during uh, his long life that he was there working. It has been perfectly preserved. It's really cool, and, and unfortunately, you can't touch anything. If you want to touch something, you got to go to the Rutgers Makerspace. But it's all here. Part, you know, this is part of his chemistry laboratory. This is part of his his mechanical laboratory. And you look at that, and you might say, "Well, I, you should say, wow, that looks kind of primitive." Well, this is the late 19th century, early 20th century, and compared to the technology we have today, yeah, it is kind of primitive. It should be, but. What is the constant? What has not changed from the time of Edison uh, to, to today? Human creativity, human curiosity, human intelligence, human drive to succeed. Okay? Edison had it, and even though he had what we might consider uh, not the fanciest laboratories, he did things that changed the entire world for the better forever. All right? We have even better technology, and I'm hoping we have even better, uh, you know, energy and curiosity. Uh, and if we do, then we could have several Thomas Edison's sitting right here in this classroom, right? Or Henry Ford, or Steve Jobs, or Bill Gates, right? Et cetera, et cetera. It's a lot of these people. A lot of these people. Um, and to finish up, we will uh, organize some tours because you can't have just a work, some fun stuff. Um, Rutgers University is very closely related to New York City. If you haven't been there, it's pretty awesome. Um, and it's also closely uh, located to Philadelphia, uh, which is um, America's most historic city. So we have the commercial capital of America, the historic capital of America. Uh, think back, I showed you that laboratory 
Thomas Jefferson? Or Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Edison. A lot of great people named Thomas, by the way. I mean, we can all agree. Okay. A lot of, I think we can all agree. A lot of great people named Thomas. Uh, Thomas Edison. But in that building, in that little tiny building right there, is where the United States of America was created. That's where the Declaration of Independence was signed. That's where the Constitution was written. The entire Constitution uh, was written and signed right there. So we have the historic capital, the commercial capital, and that's that's also a very important part. Okay, uh, those of you who come to the program, you'll find that I will enjoy the weekends more than the week. Okay, because working week is always too hard, and the weekends are fun. You get to go. To Okay, um, last slide, um, contact information, um, we have, we have the, the old, old-fashioned way, brochure, and it's a fold-it-yourself brochure, all right, or you can take it to the Makerspace facility, put it in an automatic folding machine, or you can fold it yourself. Um, contact information, Sergey. And, uh, and, and Dr. Bratsoon, uh, Olga, who's uh, uh, one of our uh, administrators downstairs, can't, can't not know Olga. Um, <laughs> this is a almost impossible to read link uh, to our website, uh, which unfortunately I tried to highlight the yellow and I only got half of it. Go to Concordia website, Concordia. Uh, uh, dot edu dot ua, concordia dot edu dot ua, and you will find uh, very detailed information, day by day scheduling, very very detailed information, and an application uh, for the program because we're encouraging our best students to come. We're encouraging the best students from Kiev Polytechnic so, to come. Just so, read it out. So, so it's uh, 2019. Uh, dash 10, dash 10, dash scientific innovation in the brochure program. I tell you what, if you're, if, if, because I think this is probably my mistake, that link to our website with the detailed information uh, didn't make it onto the brochure. All the contact information, you can contact Natalia and she'll give it to you. If you're interested, give me your email and I'll send you, I'll send you uh, that slide. Okay, so that's our program with uh, with Rutgers. Again, it's something we're very proud of. Uh, it's we're only able to do this uh, because of the academic and ethical standards we have. So the next time you're complaining about how hard your classes are and how difficult uh, we are, especially me, uh, just remember uh, when you finish here, you'll have a you'll have a degree that is as equally respected as any business degree from any university in America. In fact, it'll be more respected than most, okay? So think about the program, think about the book. I want to thank Sergey for coming. So uh, it is it. a great program, and you can imagine that if uh, I selected this place to present this book, this, this is a great program. And uh, uh, now this is a good moment to uh, present this book to Paul. And so this is our present to you. Where's your photo? Where's your photo? Oh, my photo. Okay, the one my photo. Uh, okay, if you want well, 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 some, well, some, some boring people, okay, some of okay. them are here. Well, since, since, since you asked, here's Sergei's photo. <laughs> okay. All right. And uh, I should also uh, present the book to uh, Natalia Prosun, who is also in this program, because uh, this will give her some ideas about innovation and everything that um, you will uh, also hopefully invent. And uh, now, they, yeah, so thank you, Natalia, for uh, all your work and support. And, uh, so, what are these uh, men in black, you know? Uh, some of them uh, are working in Canada, like uh, Lina Vilenska, and uh, th this man who is working in Toronto. I wanted to show a video, but probably don't have time, so next time. Uh, these are some people who are very cool in terms of if you want to invent something in Rangers Makerspace. Uh, this is... Uh, 
the person who invented uh, a perfect way to print ceramics with 3D printers. Mm -hmm. Think about this, uh, Mr. Uso. Uh, this is Sergei. Uh, so do you know, everyone probably used deposit photos, so it was invented by Ukrainian. Uh, and finally, now we come to this uh, student proposed program as we had, but uh, what can be proposed? Actually, in, in principle, anything, but uh, there is a very special thing in uh, Rutgers that uh, attracted my attention. It's Arduino and data uh, analysis uh, um, facilities that can be used. Here you have some, well, you know Oleg Gawlenka, here we have uh, Oleg Belogorsky and uh, Kronotovsky from our book, who are also working in cybersecurity. And you know this fascinating area, cybersecurity. Basically, why are we telling you this? When we invite students from engineering, you know, some, sometimes they are like, okay, I have some idea, I don't know what to do with this. But you are business students. You always know how to make uh, an idea marketable, you know, how to do the business plan. So when I bring some students here, you need to know how to ignite these people so they don't see it with this idea like sometimes they do in the hackathons. Okay, this is my project, I presented it and forget it. No, it should not be forgotten, it should be a business model. And we have a very distinguished uh, person here today from the Kiev Polytechnic. I am really pleased to uh, give the floor to Alexey Bolonovsky, who is a top expert in cybersecurity. Uh, hi, Jeroman. I know that you're tired. That's uh, so dark on the street and so on, so on, so on. I will be quick. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm from Kigai as well as. Uh, I work in business. Uh, be honest, in my business today, it's a little bit strange business. Uh, you know, I am a cyber security trainer. Yeah? That's why I know how to hack your devices and uh, how to teach you to hack and or investigate and so on, so on, so on. Uh, today's evening is devoted to the innovations, so uh, let's talk about innovation. Uh, I began to work in the field of cyber security education almost like 10 years ago. And uh, you know what was very strange for me? We have more than 40 universities in Ukraine uh, studied cybersecurity. <coughs> 40 universities. It's a lot of and so on, so on, so on. And uh, according to their program, I um, spent a lot of time to investigate the programs, difference, and so on, so on, so on. I saw a lot of fucking <coughs> boring uh, <laughs> content. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, a lot of physics, math, and so on, so on, so on. And uh, Let's say students study, study, uh, starts to study cybersecurity at the end of third, beginning of the first uh, years of graduate, so on and so on. And for me, I think it's a little bit uh, late. For example, do you have a mobile phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you have your password? Don't give it to Alexei, he will hack it. I will. It's illegal. It's illegal. Uh, you do. Yeah, you have password, so on, so on. You use it. Tell me, please, do you know? Uh, do you need to know the physics of uh, radio waves to understand how to set your password correctly? Yeah, you know. Yeah, sure. Uh, that's a trick. That uh, for today, you know, uh, all your, uh, you all uh, know how to use without understanding how it works generally. Yeah. Microwaves, frequency, modulation, I know it, but never mind. Uh, and, uh, that, uh, and so interesting that if you talk about education, how to educate people uh, to, to be ready for modern world, especially such a uh, high topic as cybersecurity, uh, I was surprised that, that uh, we have a lack of uh, good education materials, good education platforms, and so on. And uh, I make a mistake to uh, education platform. I mean, uh, gambling, so gambling for education, or competition for education, and uh, virtualization for education, and so on. And it works. It's strange, but it works. And uh, if you talk about the um, salary, I don't know. <coughs> we don't talk about this. You're business you guys, you know. About this. Um, uh, I would like to say that uh, sometimes it's uh, very strange that people are ready to pay for. 
Really? And be honestly, for today, uh, people, I mean, who are interested in cybersecurity, are ready to pay for more, for, let's say, advanced education technologies. What does it mean? I just uh, create uh, some virtual containers in the cloud and sell it a lot of people without any problems. <laughs> they are ready to play for scenarios. For scenarios, how to hack this virtual machine. Jesus Christ, all these scenarios, describe it on YouTube. You know the site YouTube, yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> and uh, and this is the second trick, that uh, for today people are not ready to, uh, sorry, they are ready to pay for uh, filtered information. It's true. All that, uh, all hacking techniques, all hacking uh, tools and so on could be uh, found in the internet without any problems. Maybe with some access to torrents, to YouTube, to some... But people are ready to pay that I just, I need to read it and bring it to them in a clear way. Imagine. It's ridiculous, but it works. I don't know how, but uh, it's a sense strange. And that's why I would like to uh, give you one advice. Uh, it doesn't matter the topic that it works for. Cybersecurity, uh, IoT, or whatever, uh, maybe, I don't know, education, education, business. But uh, you should understand that all hypotheses uh, could be real. And uh, people are very strange things, let's say. They are ready to pay. And uh, today, uh, sometimes to pay for very strange things. That's why uh, I would, uh, would like to say, give people possibility to pay you. I don't know for what, but they will do it. And I believe you will be successful, okay? Stay touch and so on, and uh, if you would like to work in cybersecurity, never connect to public Wi-Fi. That's it. Yeah. <laughs>